Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where it's about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Lovecraft Country. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I think it's really neat how they do this interesting thing with this, because they did it from transitioning from episode 1 to episode 2, where it's just kind of like, alright, things are a little different, but you really don't get the ins and outs about exactly everything that went over, because basically, after everything that went down at the end of episode 2, it's been about a couple weeks because at first you don't really know the time frame you see Letty at church and everything and then immediately my brain was like oh are you there just because it's like because uh, it I wasn't sure because I was wondering if that was something related to George but I don't think it was I think that was just her in church but it's like well considering everything you went through plus the fact of the matter is you died and came back to life like that's still got to be messing with you a little bit but we see that um, she basically takes her sister Ruby and it's like, hey, I bought this place. And she's, you, and she's like, basically, she talked about the fact that she wanted to use this as an opportunity for us to be sisters again. And part of me was wondering, is it because of what happened to George? Because, I mean, George and herself, because it's like, you realize like, how short life is. But also, like, uh, Montrose and uh, George didn't have the best relationship. So maybe, you know, that sibling situation might have inspired her. Or, you know, maybe just her own mortality kicked in because, you know, dying and coming back. But, uh they buy a place, and we, as the audience, get that little excerpt about like 1955. Some uh, a group of people moved in, um, and obviously not the word they use, uh, but the fact of the matter is, some of them ended up disappearing. You know, pioneering is dangerous. And obviously the place is immediately creepy. Like Letty's looking at the elevators like, oh, it's stuck. And then she, she almost gets decapitated by it. She luckily backs away. And she's like laughing about it. Ha, ha, ha. But then like the moment she closes the door, she has that look. Because once again, I think her mortality is a lot more. Because I think it's that thing because you're young. you know. And I think a lot of people talk about it. When you're young, you feel like, oh, I'm on top of the world. Can't nothing stop me. Dying and coming back to life is going to make you go look at things from a different perspective now. But obviously her and Ruby are trying to, you know... You know, dress the place up, you know, because it's like this could be their place because Letty's like this could be a place for black folk can come to be safe, you know, because obviously it's a white neighborhood, but still it's kind of a place that they can call their own, you know. So at first you're because part of me thinks like, is it because of everything that George was working on the guide and everything like could this be kind of Letty's own way to try and kind of give back as well, considering everything that they experience. And obviously we see Tick, he's with his um with his aunt and um. Uh, her daughter D and the situation is interesting because like obviously you can tell like the whole thing is messing with her because it's like she's ripping out the pages of that book uh Dracula obviously uh obviously you know George was a reader but like the fact that she was tearing out those pages and you could tell things were awkward between her and Tick because even D's kind of like obviously it's like the way um Tick set up the table it's like oh there's room for someone else and it's like oh yeah a reminder like oh my dad's gone you know and she's trying to like I think everyone's trying to put up a strong front but even Tick kind of immediately kind of feels like oh I've overstayed my welcome because it's like oh yeah the guidebooks it's like oh Tick is like no I already took care of that looked over she's like you should have let me look over he's like they look fun to me she's like okay you can tell she was a little annoyed because I think to a certain extent it's like Obviously, it's not Tick's intention. He's not trying to replace George or anything like that, trying to fill that void. But I think for her, it just it's just like him being around, honestly, is probably more of a constant reminder of George not being here because it's you're here, he's not. So, you know, and it's understandable to have those, those conflicted uh uh, feelings because obviously we see between uh, Tick, you know, ends up talking to his dad. Once again, we still haven't unveiled that whole thing because uh, I guess George, George sadly never got a chance to tell him. And I wonder will Montrose ever tell him? And maybe that'd be a reason why, like, it, it, things are even more complicated between him and Tick even more now because he's got that wrestling in the back of his mind. It's like, do I ever tell Tick the truth? It's like, he's my son, but technically he's not really my son, you know? So. Because I'm sure it would hit him even harder being like, it's not only your uncle George, it's it's your own dad. You're, you know, but you don't know that yet. But um, at the very least, like Montrose, you know, obviously has his own, own regrets about the whole situation between, you know, him and George, you know. Um, but regardless, circling back to what I was, you know, uh, bringing up earlier. Uh, but the thing is, uh, Montrose and Tick talk about the fact is they never told uh, George's wife the truth about what happened. They basically say like, oh, a sheriff shot him. It's like, I mean, that was connected to all of this. Granted, you know, obviously they had to kind of fit because it's like, what do you want to tell her? You know, monsters exist. White people have magic. It's like, well, maybe we just tell her. But it's like, because he's like, no, like, you know, what's that going to do? 
she can't do nothing about it. We sure as hell can't do nothing about it. So why burden her with that? I mean, for one, she'll probably just think you're crazy. But, you know, take us thinking, like, if Uncle George were here, Montrose was like, well, he's not here. He's like, but if he was here, he'd tell us to look into this more. And Montrose slams the table. What I thought was interesting is Tick immediately jumped back. And I think that's supposed to be representative of the relationship. Like, you know, he got abused by their, his dad like Montrose got abused by his. So, But the fact is, and that's a sad thing, that that's Tick's immediate reaction to just jump back. It's like, I think for him, it's just kind of like, you know... Despite everything, it's still that, like, he does have a little bit of fear towards his dad of, like, you know, he dealt with his dad's abuse, you know? So it's like, and I don't know if Montrose necessarily caught that. You can tell, like, because obviously it's, he doesn't want him to keep bringing up George. It's like, no, we leave the shit where it is. That's that whole Lodge thing. It is what it is. Like, all we can do is just basically keep moving forward because it's like, no kind of, ain't no point in drowning in the past, which it seems like, you know, Montrose himself is drowning in the past, you know, kind of, you know, once again, regrets and all that. So obviously Tick shows up at Letty's place. Obviously a lot of people around that she's taking pictures because obviously like, you know, people are moving stuff in, cleaning the place up. But what I thought was really interesting, though, was like, obviously, she talks about the fact is like, oh, it's been like three weeks. You never came to me, you know, came to check on me before. But for him, it's like I'm ch checking on you now because I'm leaving town because he feels like he overstayed his welcome. And it's just kind of like after everything, it's just he I think for him, it's also a thing if he just wants to kind of get as far away from here. I should also know I thought was kind of interesting because Montrose had told this story about him and George because like, you know, Tick knows the story because he's like, oh, yeah, like George, Uncle George used to talk about that story all the time that basically they got surrounded by some white folk and some mysterious guy showed up with Jackie Robinson to their hands, which I think is obviously because like Jackie Robinson literally split, split Cthulhu in half in the dream sequence at the beginning. So I think that's kind of interesting how that kind of comes a little full circle like that. But even saying that now, the whole Jackie Robinson thing just kind of makes me, you know, think about, you know, I, I'd rather not go there because it's already like a depressing enough thing. So it's like, just don't want to bring this even, this review down even more because it's just, it's stuff in the back of my head. Um, regardless, the fact that the matter is, I think it's interesting because like, Maybe it's always there. Like, obviously, we know how Letty feels about Tick because of just, like, the little spill that they were under. But we weren't 100% sure where Tick's feeling left. It, it might be a thing of, like, they kind of had a thing for each other. Maybe when they were, at the very least, maybe he had a thing for her when he was younger. But now it's even more, now that they're older. And, um, but he's not really taking that step forward. She kind of wants him to because I think that last episode made her kind of confront how she kind of feels about him. Uh, but, um, obviously he was going to leave until, like, obviously the neighborhood white folk didn't appreciate all these black people moving into the neighborhood. So, bricks tied to car horns, you know, they're outside standing out front, like, oh, uh, welcome to the neighborhood type of situation. Tick is obviously going to stick around. And I thought it was interesting, too, like, how they do that kind of, like, it almost feels like a horror movie. I mean, obviously there's a horror element to the show, but it's, like, it's so interesting, like, how they do, like, the counting down the days. It's like, oh, day one. Day two, day five, day nine, so seven, day nine, stuff like that. I just thought it was kind of interesting how they transitioned to days and stuff like that um, over the course of the episode. But initially, like, obviously, like, you can immediately start seeing, like, all right, there's some spooky shit going on. We're seeing ghosts, like, disfigured ghosts and stuff like that. Obviously, like, Letty goes downstairs and it's like the boiler had been messed with. She immediately thinks it's the the people in the neighborhood i'm assuming it's all the shit that went down in the episode i don't know if they ever correlated that being because that's her initial thought but then like uh something below like was beating on like that floor like that led down like and she got freaked out she called tick and tick kind of chalks it up to like hey maybe you're a little freaked out because you know going through a little basically ptsd because of everything we went through all the crazy shit we saw you know so for him, he's like, I'm going to nail down the doors and stuff like, or the windows and stuff like that, make sure everything's okay. And they help touch hands and then Tick kind of pulls away from her because I guess for him, it's just kind of like a, after everything that went down, I think he, maybe he's just a little scared, you know, scared to take that. I mean, maybe because he hasn't been close to someone in a very long time. So getting close to Letty, maybe it, just, you know, it scared him because it's just like, well, the last person he was close to, his uncle George died and he blames himself. So maybe, you know, also Letty died too. Granted, she came back, but maybe he feels like maybe if I'm still around you, I'm too much of a bad luck charm or something, you know? So... But um, obviously, the party keeps rolling. Um, a lot of people invited. It just, it's a very nice party, singing and dancing. Um, 
I thought it was kind of interesting, a little bit of a background thing. It's like, oh yeah, there's this new preacher dude, uh, Michael. And I think they call, he says, he goes by the name Martin. I was like, right. Because I actually forgot about, like, once again, I think it's kind of interesting. A lot of this does give me, you know, even an insight as someone to me who's ignorant about a, a lot of stuff. I'm sure there's a lot of history as a black person I should know that I don't know, you know. But, like, even, like, because I think I vaguely remember learning that, like, you know, that, like, I mean, I wouldn't, my entire, most of my life, no, thinking Martin Luther King Jr.'s name was Martin, but it's not. Because the way they say it, it's like, oh, it's Michael, but he's going by Martin now. I wonder, is that whole thing true about maybe he was engaged to a white woman? And then there's that line I thought was kind of interesting. It's like, just because you're married you're with a white person doesn't mean you're not looking out for the best interests of black folk or something and then letting the other woman kind of laughed about that I was like I'm sure that's kind of an opinion a lot of people might have potentially had and you know, it was it was just kind of an interesting thing but it was just like right because I, I vaguely remember picking that up somewhere like oh yeah Martin's not his real name he just changed his name I think it's supposed to be reflective of like the same like Martin Luther from like god I, I for I lost all my world history the same Martin Luther that like being the freaking thing it was like a notice or something to some door like i'm butchering history but i know that like he's not the first martin luther that there was one before like long 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 time before martin luther king it was i, I think that's where he got inspired by using the name martin maybe it had something to do with that i like i said i am ignorant to a lot of history so i do apologize um but regardless the fact of the matter is obviously tick is watching Letty dance with other people and obviously you can tell it's rubbing him the wrong way because it's just it's bothering him and she's looking at him while she's doing it it's like almost kind of a thing of like I think she wants him to make a move she wants him to do something but he won't and the guy had walked up to him and was like oh you know oh like you it reminds me he's like oh I'm getting all nostalgic because me and Letty we used to kind of mess around and stuff like that he's like oh but I mean if it's between you and her you better basically stake your claim. Like, if you feel something toward, if you and Letty are a thing, make it clear, you know. And then Letty kind of goes to the bathroom, kind of freshens up. Uh, Tick comes in, they do their thing. Um, I I immediately thought, like, when that happened, I was like, oh, that. I was like, oh, is she a virgin? But it's like, no, home dude was saying they were messing around. I mean, messing around doesn't mean jack shit. It could have just been like a whole bunch of making out that they never went to sex or whatever. But then she started kind of going like, kind of felt embarrassed and just kind of like, because she made it seem like, oh, it's just my time of the month type of situation. But um, obviously that kind of moment kind of immediately gets turned over by the fact is, burning cross in the water, I mean, in the uh, out there in the yard, and obviously it sets Letty off, starts smashing up the cards, knocking down the bricks, you know, uh, obviously the others had gotten shotguns ready, but that, after all that noise and making such a point, they heard the police rolling up, it's like, alright, let's get these guns out of here, we don't want to give these cops any other ammunition against us, and Letty gets taken in, because it's like, oh, we heard about the complaints you had, and Letty's like, what about the 21 complaints I had about our neighbors, like, the cop is like, oh, have you heard any complaints? No, I heard any complaints, not that I can think of, so it's like, obviously, you know, it is what it is, type, uh, in the most fucked up uh, uh, sense of the matter, but, um, then he starts pressing her about the house. It's like, where'd you get the house? Like, who told you about the house? Like, where'd you get the money from and stuff like that? My immediate thought was like, everything that went down last episode, she either took some stuff and sold it and made bank and she was able to kind of, um, buy off like the house and stuff like because she was so cagey when her sister kept asking about the money. That's why I was like, oh, it must have been like connected to that. So you don't want to let her know. But, um, because once again, then we kind of got to the point where was like, yeah, where did you hear about this house and stuff like that? And the cop was asking so much questions, even to the point like having her flung around the uh, truck, like having the truck curve and everything and make her kind of land, fly, fly into stuff to beat her up to kind of, you know, get whatever information you're trying to get out of her. So it's like, okay. Then he talked about the fact is that there are black folk that like got sliced into pieces. Like, oh, we found like eight bodies that were sliced and diced. So... And then Letty goes back and she looks at the picture she's taken and she sees like slash marks through it and then she like puts all the photos together and it forms like a symbol or something and then like a ghostly thing happens and it's like, okay, okay. And so obviously Letty's been like trying to research this whole thing while everyone else is moving out because obviously they like blaming Letty saying like things were already bad enough. Letty doing what she did just brought more attention to them. But it's like Letty lets it slip. She's like, it's fine. I've got more money than mom left me. Shit. It's like, wait, the money, you got it from mom. It's like, yeah, mom left me an inheritance. Which obviously hit Rudy, uh, Ruby a certain way because it's like, 
you had the very complicated relationship you did with our mom. We were, me and our brother was there for mom, but no. You, who couldn't even show up at her funeral, get all this money. She's like, I get it. Mom was crazy. Like, the fact that it matters, I don't know why she gave me this money. And obviously for Ruby, it's like, you lied to me, and it's just you doing what you're always doing. Because, like, you saying you made this place a safe haven for black folk, but it's like, oh, who are all these people? A whole bunch of artist people that you invited. It's not like you were looking, saying, like, you're not looking out for the community. You're doing what you wanted to do. You bought a place so you could have people over and kind of party it up, you know? And it's like, I think... She was kind of not giving Letty the benefit of the doubt because I mean, because in her mind, it's like it's like I've always gave you the benefit of the doubt of being, you know, you're a little fuck like you're a fuck up. But I never knew that you were fucked up because it's just kind of like, you know, because at no point did you make the decision like, hey, this was money that was left to you. You didn't you didn't make the decision to talk to me and our brother They're like, hey, divvy up some of this money. You made the decision all on your own. And it's like. Yes, mom might have been a little crazy. The fact of the matter is mom might have been selfish in certain regards, but she never hid who she was. If she was selfish, she made sure to. But like she was kind of saying that, you know, uh, Letty kind of has a tendency to kind of hide behind a mask and make it seem like, oh, like you have the best of intentions when you don't. So it's like you she's like for a second, I actually believed you did want to make things better between us as sisters. And it's sad because I think I mean, Letty legitimately did, especially when she talks to Tick later on. She's like, we haven't really talked about anything that went down. You know, the magic, everything, even me dying and coming back to life. Uncle George, like, we haven't talked about any of it. And for her, she's like, ever since she's come back, she's felt like a ghost. Like, it's like something's missing, you know. And I, and I think that's such an interesting, because, you know, certain fictions have kind of, you know, talked about that. Where it's kind of like, when you die and come back, there is like a part of you maybe that didn't fool. Like, maybe there's a piece of her soul or maybe something didn't 100% come back so she wanted to try and feel that with something you know whether it was church buying this place trying to repair her relationship with Ruby it was trying to feel that that emptiness that she couldn't quite describe what it was you know it's just because if it, she feels like just something wasn't whole with her anymore and she wanted to try and get it back you know but obviously looking into her research I, well, 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 well kind of circling that to that really quickly before I move on from it I am curious, like, and I brought it up last episode, what are going to be the ramifications of her dying and coming back to life? Like, there, there's always a price for that, you know? So it's like, what is that? Once again, it's like, is it a thing of like, yeah, maybe she lost a piece of her soul. Maybe she lost all of her soul. You know, like, what, what is it? Like, what, what are we going to... I mean, because also the same thing about um, Tick, like, after last episode, like, is there nothing left of that? Like... Any of that charging through his body? I guess not. It's just kind of like after he made that eruption that ended up killing a lot of people at the lodge, I guess like whatever residual energy was going, like I don't think there's anything circulating in him, like any supernatural powers that we're aware of. Uh, but regardless, the fact of the matter is Letty had looked into like, you know, tireless research into this house. The fact of the matter is finding out that basically there was a scientist who owned the house. This, uh, what was it, Epstein ended up like... Um, Research. She believes like, oh, he was experimenting on black folk and that the sheriff, the cop that actually kept pressuring her about question answers, that dude that he was bringing all the black folk to him to be like experimented on and stuff like that. So now it's a situation of they have to like potentially, you know, expel all the ghosts and stuff like that, because it's not just the ghost of the the. um eight people that were experimented on and died there, it's also the, you know, Epstein's ghost as well, which obviously even saying that's fucking weird, you know, with everything, modern day and everything, regardless. So the fact of the matter is, when it's all said and done though, like, they try, they bring in someone to kind of, you know, expel the ghost and everything, while they're doing their thing downstairs, like, some dudes broke in to, you know, start some shit, and they proceed to get, like, taking out 13 ghost style, which I think is interesting because I didn't even think about it. So now it just, it definitely reminded me of, I mean, well, there's ton, tons of ghost movies. I could have referenced like ghost ship, but I immediately think I don't, it's interesting that 13 ghosts is the first one I bring up. I haven't seen that movie in so long. I've heard people fairly recently bring it up, but it's just like, I've, I haven't seen that movie in so damn long. Regardless, um, there was a dude with the body and he had like a baby head. I was like, wait, did, did, did scientists like cut off a baby's head and attach it to a full grown man's body? Like, what was that? Stuff later on kind of makes me think, oh, like his experiments shrunk his head. Like maybe it's like the rest of his body stayed the adult, but he de-aged his head and made it so his head 
uh, was that of a baby. So he reverted back to a baby head-wise, but the rest of his body stayed an adult. But uh, basically, uh, two of the white guys get it hard like that. The other dude gets it super hard because it's like, oh, he looks at the elevator and it's like, oh, and it slides up, knocks his head off. And it's like, oh, we stay on that. We stay on that shot, I guess, because they're kind of proud of it. And like, oh, look at these special effects, man. Look at that. Don't that look good and gross and disgusting? Hell yeah. And it's just because it stays on it a good couple seconds to get that spurt out up from the neck. Dip. It. And then also you see the elevator slowly come back down too, so I'm sure that too. But it's just like they stood on that body for a while because it's like, oh man, look at, look at it, look at this. That shit looks sick in the sense that it's disgusting, but also just from a special effects way. Doesn't that look cool? You know, I think that's kind of what I kind of take from it. Um, but at the same time, they're doing the exorcism downstairs. Uh, the lady gets well tossed around because they get locked in there, and the marks they put on their head get wiped away. Um, she gets possessed, but then, like, Tick gets possessed, and Letty calls out to all the ghosts saying, like, the fact of the matter is, you don't have, to, you're still, you're not completely dead yet, you're still here, you can fight, and they all come around, and what I thought was interesting is as they're doing the incantations, you slowly but surely see, like, every one of them, whatever experiments he had performed and whatever damage he had done to their body slowly reverted, and they were becoming themselves again, uh, meaning that they uh, were no longer... Because I think they maintained those forms because they were kind of trapped in a cycle of, like, what he had done to them. But this is them breaking free and being like, no, we are ourselves again, you know, and they expelled them. Well, it seems like not just expelled them, they straight up killed them because it seems like his ghost turned to ash and everything. So, obviously, we're trying to pretend like, you know, it seems like, oh, everything kind of returned to normal. I mean, it's like, also, like, this uh, reporter or whatever, she was like, oh, yeah, did you hear about, like, three of your white neighbors disappearing? She's like, no, I didn't hear anything about that. And I'm like, okay. So I was like, so... And so immediately, like, the elevator goes down, and you see some sigils on, like, the wall as it's going down. And then we see the three dead white dudes, and then, like, a whole bunch of other bodies. So part of my brain is like, are those other white people, or are those the black folk that died whose bodies were just, like, is that... They're, like, obviously, supposed to represent, like, obviously... I'm thinking that's supposed to be, like... This the black spirits they inhabit that place. We're gonna keep this place safe. So to keep you know the police from kind of nosing in here, we're gonna throw the bodies down there. So not unless that's supposed to be other white people that. But then it's like the the that uh, scientist dude. He seemed like he was the one that was in most control at the time. So those could have been like either the people that he killed when he is he was alive, or those are supposed to be the dead bodies of the black folk he killed while he was a ghost or whatever. I, I don't know. Either way, I think the spirits are there to kind of make sure, like, any black people who stay there are protected and that they're fine. You know, I think they're kind of, like, cast murdery, murderous, uh, Casper the Friendly Ghost. They're more like guardians, I think, in a sense. It's kind of where they're going to uh, fit in that mode. But obviously, Letty kind of took what her sister said, and if she is... Uh, still going to hold this place to be, yeah, maybe she didn't have the best of intentions. Maybe she was trying to fill some hole in herself, but at the same time, she does want to do good with it because she was inspired by her sister. So I'm wondering, will this change anything? Probably not. Her sister's still going to be mad at her, but at the very least, regardless of all that, you can still do good with it. Uh, I didn't talk about it. I should circle back to it, but uh, George's wife is suspicious of something. Like She's like, yeah, I saw... Uh, George's body, but the fact of the matter, so for her, it's like, ever since Tick was around, she was like, something just didn't feel right, like, it, like you guys aren't telling me 100% the truth, she's like, there's something more, and it's like, what more do you think there is, she's like, I don't know, but there's something, and it's like, obviously, uh, Montrose is trying to make sure, you know, obviously, it's like, the last thing you need to know is about all the crazy shit that we experienced and what went down. I'm assuming home dude, the evil goat, I'm assuming he's the one that, like, because obviously D and her friends were, you know, with that uh, Ouija board. Spirit board, I should probably say, because I think Ouija board is copywritten. So if you want to say that, you have to say, like, oh, it's a spirit board, because that's a, that's a general term. Ouija is a specific brand. So I think I, I think that, that that's what that is. I, I could be mistaken, but um, I think I remember hearing that. But, uh... What I thought was, obviously, it's like someone was like, oh, who's, who are we talking to? And it said, George. I was like, oh, shit. And then it's like, is dead. And she was pissed at him. She's like, why would you do that? You guys suck for doing that. I'm assuming that was home dude because he was trying to get, obviously, like, oh, he wanted to piss her off. He wanted to hurt anyone. So that's what that mainly was about. There was one of those kids, um, the lighter skinned boy. I was like, where do I know that kid from? I was like, I've seen you with something somewhat recently, but I don't remember what it was. I looked it up on IMDb. I, 
from uh, Marvel's Cloak and Dagger. I was like, that's what it is. He played uh, Tyrone when Tyrone was a kid. He he played uh, he he was the actor who portrayed Tyrone as a kid. I was like, that's what I knew you from. That was crazy. Uh, but nevertheless, um, so there's all of that. But then finally, we see Tick and he sees uh, Christina. And he confronts her because he's like, you're the one. Letty thinks the money came from her mom, but it came from you, didn't she? She's like, how did you know? Because basically one of the people associated with this has ties to that, you know, order. And he's like, he, he's like, I saw his name scribed on the wall, so I knew he was part of the order. So it's like, you're the reason why Letty got that money. And so for him... You know, it's like because it turns out like those experiments and everything were a byproduct of like Epstein ended up being like the student of someone who started the order. So it's like he was carrying over to work. So that's why all that experimental stuff was happening. You know, it's because it was some magic shit like some dude left and tried to kind of accomplish exactly what Christina's dad was trying to accomplish, like the Garden of Eden thing. Um, but obviously kind of didn't pan out on their front either. But um well, maybe, maybe just, well, things weren't 100% there, but Christina's here because she's trying to get the pages that were stolen uh, from the Book of Names. Um, there's something else, this, something else I, I remember watching that's used in Book of Names. I don't remember what it was. I know the Book of the Dead I'm thinking of is the Mummy, but do they have a Book of the Names in the Mummies movie too? It's like the original ones with Brendan Fraser and... Um I feel like that might have been something that came up in two. I don't remember. It's been so damn long since I've seen the movies. I love those movies. I know people don't really care for the third one, but I really like it too. Because also, like, it's fucking Jet Li's in it. Kind of bummed that Rachel Weisz didn't return. Uh, I still think Maria uh, Bello did a good job, regardless. Tangents and all that. Um, God, where the hell was I going to go with that? Right, circling back. It's like... Tick was there to be like, oh, I'm trying to make sure you don't hurt my family and my friends. He points the gun at Christina, but he can't pull the trigger. And then she's like, okay, so let me go back more explaining these magic lessons. She's basically like, people who do gain a good understanding of the magic will only have one spell that they can really like fool it. Because I think it basically takes an entire lifetime just to, even if, if you really understand magic, you'll get one spell at best in your entire lifetime. Her dad's was invulnerability. He figured as long as nothing could ever hurt me, I could basically live forever. But he had to drop the spell the moment um, he was trying to get into the Garden of Eden. So hence why he, he was able to die. Uh, so I don't know whether it... She never really explained what was going on there. I guess it's a thing of like she herself had mastered a spell that let her do that. Or maybe it was kind of the same thing where it's like... I can't be hurt, meaning like you're in a situation where you can't pull the trigger on me because the spell won't let you hurt me. So either the spell went to her after her dad removed it or maybe she automatically had it because he did it. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I misinterpreted a lot of that. But for her, it's like um, basically, I mean, they are technically family. So it's kind of like, oh, let's find those pages together. And she's like, also, Tick, you should know you can't go around killing white women, you know, a white woman. So, and I thought that was kind of interesting because obviously, because I figured this wasn't done. Like, I was like, everything that went down in lodge, we know at the very least Christina's still alive. I figured as much. So it's interesting to kind of circle that back in uh, because I was listening to Fat Man Beyond uh the most recent one, and I think Mark had talked about, because obviously, once again, I've never read the book, but Mark had talked about the fact is the book is actually a collection of short stories, so I think that's why, like, I brought it up, like, because even he had commented on, like, it felt like the second episode was filled with so many things, you know, so it's like, I think it's because it, they, the, because that's probably, like, everything that went down in episode one and two is one story. What's happening this time, this uh, episode could have been another story, so it's like, almost like, one shot stories to a certain extent, but the show is kind of because I think he said like there are correlations that there are characters that um cross over between the stories. But I think for him, it's like I think he had described it as like it seems like the show is creating an overarching story with these characters like Letty, um, Tick, and you know, their family and everything. They're going to be the main through lines, but it's like they're going to be connecting all these stories in a more like rather than a collection of short stories, one singular narrative is kind of what it seemed like it was going for and I think we're kind of you know seeing that but um regardless of it all uh 
show continues to be, like I said, weird and crazy, and I'm there for it. So I'm curious to ultimately see where all this takes us, especially this whole thing with Christina, like her being around and stuff like that. Um, what's that all, you know, going to turn into, like, obviously, you know where all these stories are heading going forward with all of this. You know, we'll ultimately have to wait and see where it all takes us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love, like, to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.